Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of Code Cop, the series where I go on LinkedIn, Twitter and blogs and I try to find good advice about writing clean code, but in reality that advice is really, really bad and I'm trying to convert it into good advice. LinkedIn specifically will promote basically anything as long as it gets one like, so it's extremely notorious about this type of behavior and in this video I have a LinkedIn post for you which is just nuts. As always, this is not an attack on the creator themselves, but rather on the post itself and the advice that they're trying to give, and that's why they're anonymized always in these videos. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, let's take a look at the advice on this video because it is nuts, really. Like, I don't know how this is just recommended as advice. So the text of the post says the following. Properties are more versatile than class member variables. I used to be all over class member variables, those underscore variable declarations with class scope. Now I hardly use them. Properties are more useful. They look nicer because there's no underscore. Auto-implemented properties create an implicit class member anyway. We'll explain why that doesn't make any sense later. Now, more than 90% of the time, I don't need an explicit class member variable. When I want a class member variable, I still have the option to explicitly declare them. My code is cleaner and clearer now. Bullshit. <laughs> Let's put that into context to understand what the person who wrote this is trying to explain. This is the image that they uh, accompanied the post with. So, clean code tip. Prefer properties to class members. Now, right off the get-go, this doesn't make any sense because properties are, by definition, class members. So, what they mean is prefer properties from fields. That's basically it. So what you have over here is a class that's called transaction update use case. You implement an interface and then you have a private I transaction persistor, which is being injected from the constructor. I should add over here that this should be read only. It's not, it's fine. And they say that instead of using that, what you should use instead is actually a property, a private property. I, I swear I'm not making this up. Now, what I'm going to do real quick, just so we have a better idea of what exactly is going on, is go back to the ID, and I'm going to show you that I have this example over here, the exact same thing that's in the post, and what they're basically recommending is don't have this private field over here that you inject to the constructor, instead have a property, but that property should be private, which we will explain why that doesn't make any sense in a second, and then that will prevent you from having to deal with the underscore because properties are named using Pascal case and then you don't need a setter as well because you're gonna initialize it in the constructor. Now here's a few reasons why this doesn't make any sense. First, why would you have a property which is a concept that supports encapsulation as a field? It doesn't make any sense. In fact, if I actually go into the code that this thing will be compiled into, and I show you how the low-level C-sharp will look like, as you're going to see, a field will be generated over here for that property because the property is basically a getter or a setter or both, depending on what you have, and then a backing field to store that data. So the outcome is exactly the same, but now you also have a getter method, which, by the way, looks like this. I'm going to say public i uh, transaction persistor, and I can say get underscore and this, and as you're going to see, this isn't accepted because it is actually clashing with what the compiler will use. Because if I copy this name and I go to the IL viewer, you'll see that this name is actually used on the IL level to define the name of the method that will be generated as the getter. So that's why you can't use it. Sorry if I'm getting too technical with this, but you have to understand why this is a really bad idea. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a massive six-hour course on DOM train called From Zero to Hero, Test-Driven Development in C-Sharp. That course will take you from knowing nothing about testing and TDD and get you to a point where you fully understand the concept and you have all the technique and knowledge to apply it on any C-Sharp code base. It is authored by Guy Ferreira, who has an excellent YouTube channel, link in the description, but he's also someone who I work with personally in my previous company and I can 100% vouch for him. He really, really knows the topic and he actually changed the way I see the topic as well and the way I teach it. I believe it's a must know for any developer and the first 500 of you can use discount code TDD20 and click the link in the description to claim it at checkout. These do tend to go very very quickly and I don't renew them later so if you want to buy it then buy it now. Now back to the video. So encapsulation makes sense if you have a protected or a public member but for private it doesn't make any sense because you're already in the class that is supposed to have access to the row data to the actual field. So why would you make a private property to access that privately within your class? You wouldn't. It doesn't make 
any sense. It is like you're creating a wrapper class, like a private wrapper int class, for example, over here, which is here to wrap a public integer. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense at all. So let's take a look at the reasoning, because they actually gave nine reasons why this is a good idea. So reason number one, it's pretty. <laughs> Pure, ugly underscores. Now, the underscore of a private field or a private read-only, which is what this should be filled, is there for a reason. This is not random. It, we didn't just add it because we hate developers, and Microsoft did not add it because they hate developers. In fact, previously, it used to be M underscore, but we've changed over the years to just the underscore. And the reason for that is because when you're looking at the method down below the declaration of the class, and let's say you have a public void method over here, and that method can also have a string text. What that underscore helps me see is that if I have this transaction persistor in this case, this tells me this is a class level member, which is a field, just by seeing the underscore and the way it is named. And that is it. And by having text, for example, over here be like this, I know for a fact that it is a parameter of this method as an argument. So just by naming it this way, without having to scroll all the way up to see where something is declared, I can see everything and I can know everything about this member. So you can say this ugly, but it makes sense. The alternative, of course, is don't add it. You In your own code, if you don't want it, you don't need to have the underscore. Just remove it. And as long as you're using this dot to maybe be explicit and don't confuse the class level members and their method arguments, then you're, you're fine. You don't have to use the underscore. I like it. I prefer it because of the reasons I just explained, but you don't have to use it. And you don't have to change from a field to a property for this to make sense. Okay, the next reason they give is encapsulation. Hide internal state. You're already a private member in a class. What state are you hiding? I do not understand this point at all. And also the other thing, data validation and server valid data. I guess that point is about... Uh, being able to have logic in a getter and return based on something that can be validated. But then at this point, this is a completely different thing. It doesn't really make sense. Plus, you're going to be validating every time you're getting this value because that's now a method, not a field. So performance will be degraded and you're going to be validating every time. Do you want to validate every time you get this property? Probably not. You just want to store it as a field. In fact, if the type of validation you want is to check whether that is null or not, you would do it in the constructor. You wouldn't do it on the getter. The next thing is property getters, computer transform values. Would you want to add this type of logic in your application? Like, why don't you do this when the value is composed initially so you can do it once and then be done with it? Otherwise, you're going to have to do it every time. And actually, to the next point, lazy loading. Yeah, you technically can have lazy loading by doing this, but then what exactly are you doing? doing because you're not going to improve performance by lazy loading it because you're not really lazy loading it you're going to load it every time unless you store it in a field which means you're going to have to have an extra field just have it once in the beginning why do you have to have it twice it doesn't make any sense at all also versioning like i really do not understand what versioning means here like please if you understand let me know i i I don't get it. What are you going to version here? I implement versioning in the getter? Why would you do that? That's a completely different construct. It's not meant for that. Then you have debugging and logging. Again, are you going to have a log invocation in the getter? So you're going to not only return a value that's computed, but you all, like, at this point, just make a method and put all the logic in the method itself. Change notification. Again, different thing. This is not supposed to be used for everything. I know the person said 90% of the use cases will be covered by doing this. I would argue 1% of the use cases fall around this. Not everything needs notification on the change. And nowadays, if you need a notification on the change, you're going to use a source generated approach to this or an IL weaved approach to it with something like 40 and notification change, not a manual getter. So what? Also, mocking and testing, simplifying testing and mocking. How is that simplifying it? It's the exact same thing, but actually worse, because now I don't only really have to worry about what I'm injecting. So in this case, worry about what I'm injecting and knowing that this will be mapped to a field, but I have to worry about injecting this and then worry about whatever is in the getter as well, which might need to be mocked or dealt with. This advice, in my opinion, is absolutely terrible. You should not follow it. It will lead to a really bad design choices. And I'm very confused as to how this came about to be. I feel like 
Some people just want to come up with some advice to post something, but that ultimately leads to bad advice being promoted and people blindingly following it without really questioning it. But as always, these videos are meant to be part of a discussion. So please in the comments down below, let me know what you think about this type of advice, because you know, I could be wrong and you could have something else to add into the conversation. So which one would you choose and why would you choose one over the other? Please leave a comment down below. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.